Okay, so recently I found out that there are drugs that have platinum in them. What? Um, I want that? Okay, never mind. Anyhow, I'm intrigued by these very fancy and noble drugs. So I will make one of them and compare what I spent to make it to the market price of the drug and see if we are all getting scammed. So the one I will be making is carboplatin since it seems to be one of the major ones that is used today and there aren't really that many. Now before I get into making it, I'm also curious how these unique drugs work. So after the drug has been injected, it will enter into a cell and become oxidized to its active form, losing the cyclobutane dicarboxylate ligand. In the cell, it will find its way to the DNA and encounter a place in the DNA where two adjacent guanine bases are present. In this position, it will react and cause an intrastrand crosslink between the two guanine bases in a much more elegant way than this 2D drawing. This crosslink stops the DNA repair enzymes from repairing the mistake and also prevents the synthesis of new DNA. This will cause the cell to undergo programmed cell death since cancer cells divide more than healthy cells, they are more affected and thus it will kill more cancer cells than the healthy cells. All the different platinum based chemo drugs are believed to work this way but the ligand that is attached to the platinum changes the way the body processes the drug and can therefore be used to target specific cancers or increase the residence time in the body by preventing it from reacting with proteins. So that's pretty interesting and many chemotherapy drugs work this way. Now let's make it, starting from platinum metal. Here I have exactly 2 grams of platinum metal and it will have to be dissolved first. So I add it to a flask and on top of that I add 37.5 ml of 37% hydrochloric acid. Then I add 12.5 ml of 60% nitric acid, which together form aqua regia, which can dissolve noble metals like platinum and turn it into hexachloroplatinic acid. The mixture slowly becomes yellow and I add a stir bar. I also moved it to a heating mantle and whenever the reaction seems to stop, I either add more hydrochloric acid or more nitric acid so that it continues to react until everything is dissolved. After a while, it turns an orange red color and I boil the solution to speed it up. In the reaction, Platinum reacts with nitrosyl chloride that is formed in aqua regia from the reaction between hydrochloric acid and nitric acid to form the hexachloroplatinate ion along with nitrogen dioxide and water. The hexachloroplatinate forms a salt with two hydronium ions as hexachloroplatinic acid. When all of the platinum had dissolved, it had also concentrated down because it was boiling and it is a red solution. To remove any remaining nitric acid and dissolved nitrogen oxides, I add some 37% hydrochloric acid and we see some orange nitrogen dioxide bubble out immediately. I do that twice and distill part of it off to distill out all of the nitric acid. When that is done, I am left with a nitrogen free solution of hexachloroplatinic acid. Now for the next reaction, to the hexachloroplatinic acid solution, I add 1.53 grams of potassium chloride, which immediately reacts to form a yellow product. In this reaction, the hydronium ions are displaced by potassium ions to form the yellow insoluble potassium hexachloroplatinate which precipitates out of solution. The hydronium ions react with the remaining chlorine ions to form hydrochloric acid and water. I let it stir for a few minutes and then filter it all to collect the yellow precipitate. I wash it once with some 50% ethanol and then once with some 100% ethanol to remove salts and acid. I left it to dry on the filter for a while and then scrape it all off and transfer it all to a flask. I then add 15 ml of water to suspend the potassium hexachloroplatinate and set it aside for a second. Now to reduce the hexachloroplatinate to tetrachloroplatinate, I will have to prepare a solution of sulfur dioxide. So I set up a flask with a funnel and add in a random amount of sodium metabisulfite. Then on top, I add a dropping funnel and into that, I add a random amount of concentrated sulfuric acid. I then attach a stopper and a gas adapter. And through the gas adapter, I connect a hose that leads to a gas washing bottle filled with water. I then gradually add the sulfuric acid to the sodium metabisulfite, which reacts to form sulfur dioxide, sodium sulfate, and water. The sulfur dioxide gas will pass through the water and slowly dissolve into it until it is saturated. I just leave it running until it produces no more sulfur dioxide. And I assume that the solution is saturated. Even if it is not, it is still usable. Now back to the potassium hexachloroplatinate, I have moved it to a heating mantle and started heating it to 90 C. When it has gotten to temperature, I slowly add some of the sulfur dioxide solution to the flask 
and wait a few minutes. I keep adding a little bit at a time and gradually it becomes more and more red and the solid disappears. In the reaction, sulfur dioxide and water, which in reality is in equilibrium with sulfurous acid by its reaction with water, reduces the hexachloroplatinate to tetrachloroplatinate, while the sulfur dioxide is oxidized to sulfuric acid and the chlorine ions form hydrogen chloride. When almost all of the solid is gone, I stop adding the sulfur dioxide because if it is added in excess, it can form complexes, which is not desirable. I then filter it through the same filter that still contains some hexachloroplatinate from before. I wash it down with some water and I am left with a red filter containing potassium tetrachloroplatinate. Now for the next reaction, I set this flask in a water bath and heat it to 40 C. I add a solution of 5.4 grams of potassium iodide in 6.4 mL of water. It immediately replaces all of the chlorines with iodines and it turns black from the formation of the tetraiodoplatinate ion. Now for the next step, I immediately add 6 mL of a 12.5% ammonia solution and after a short delay, a yellow precipitate forms. In this reaction, ammonia coordinates to the platinum atom in the cis position and kicks off potassium iodide to form cis diamine diiodoplatinum 2. I then take it out of the water bath and set it in the fridge to make sure it all precipitates out. I then filter it all through a glass fit with a filter paper on top and I wash it with some water and then with some methanol. I scrape it off and put it in a new flask. I then add some water to suspend the solid and wash it off the spatula. Now for the next reaction, I have weighed out 2.2 grams of silver nitrate as the oxidizer and dissolve that in 15 mL of water. I add all of it to the flask and it immediately turns yellow. I then stopper the flask and cover it in aluminum foil to protect it against light because the silver nitrate is sensitive to light. I then leave it to stir overnight. In the reaction, silver nitrate oxidizes the platinum, ripping off the two iodines to form silver iodide. Two water molecules then coordinate to the platinum, forming a 2 plus complex of which the remaining nitrate ions balance the charge. When I come back the next day, the silver iodide has precipitated and the mixture has become lighter. I then set it aside and set up a new flask with a funnel plugged with some cotton. I then filter the whole reaction mixture through to filter out the precipitate. Over time we also see the residue get darker because of the light, because the silver iodide is also sensitive to light. I wash it with some water and the clear filtrate should contain the product. So I add a stir bar and as the final reagent, I will need 1,1-cyclobutane dicarboxylic acid. I did consider making it, but it seemed quite annoying because I couldn't find coherent literature and it isn't too expensive to buy. So of that, I add 0.7 grams to the flask and wait for it to dissolve. When that happens, I prepare a 50% potassium hydroxide solution and use that to adjust the pH of the solution to about 5 to make sure that enough of the acid is deprotonated and that the nitrate ion fucks off to form potassium nitrate instead. So I dropwise add the potassium hydroxide solution to the flask and constantly check the pH to make sure I don't overshoot. Each time I add the potassium hydroxide, a dark precipitate forms that redissolves immediately afterward. After a while, the pH is correct and it has become a bit milky and I leave it to stir for 3 hours. In the reaction, the potassium hydroxide deprotonates the acid, forming water and reacts with the nitrate ions to form potassium nitrate. The deprotonated acid then coordinates the platinum to form the final product, carboplatin. When I come back, it looks the same and I can continue with isolating it. I then wanted to distill off all of the water, but the discolored crap made me change my mind. So instead, I just heated it to its boiling point and then filtered it all through a paper filter with regular gravity filtration. I washed it down with a bunch more boiling hot water because the solubility of carboplatin is quite low. I then took the filtrate and distilled off all of the water. What is left behind contains mostly carboplatin. I washed it with cold water, then with ethanol, and then ether to remove any remaining salts and acid. But I guess my camera didn't record that. Either way, it wasn't too exciting. And I then moved all that I could get out to a vial. And the yield turned out to be 0.6 grams of an off-white solid, which should be mostly carboplatin, which can also be a little discolored in literature sometimes. The overall yield is 16% but I can't compare it properly to literature, since I didn't isolate the products in between. Now let's assume my purity is perfect medical grade and compare the price I paid to the price of the medicine. So I have 600 milligrams of carboplatin and the price of this drug in my country in its generic form is 209 euros for a total of 600 milligrams of injectable carboplatin. 
Looking online, it seemed that the American prices are basically the same. In total, I spent about 134 euros on all of the reagents, excluding disposables, energy and labor. We can assume that the yield of the large scale method is higher than my little experiment, and also that the cost of their reagents is much lower, though for platinum it's probably quite similar. But they also might have to purify their product more, package it and test it as well. So I'd say that the price of carboplatin is pretty fair. Anyhow, that was it. Thanks for watching, and as always, a special thanks to all my patrons. See ya.